This video is definitely different than my normal style, but a lot of you have been asking, can you please show me what scrapbooking software you use, that type of thing. So I thought I would go through a little bit of my workflow from start to finish of my pictures and how I document them. Even if this isn't really your thing, I definitely highly recommend you think a little bit about your photos, all the photos you take on your phone or wherever, and what are you doing with them? Are they just sitting there? We live in a generation where we have so much technology and media just at the tip of our fingertips. Back in the old days, people would carefully take pictures, make sure to print them and save them somewhere in a shoebox or put them in a photo book. And what's so sad is we have so many more pictures in this generation, but I think a lot of people actually don't go through them as much. Um, we post them on social media or our apps and then we don't have them in physical format in our homes and stuff. And so, you know, they're just kind of on the cloud and in our phones and our computers. So I highly recommend getting a legit print however you wish to do that. And I know it can be a little bit overwhelming with when we take so many thousands of pictures. So I'm just gonna be sharing kind of my workflow, how I manage all that and my scrapbooking software. So let's jump into it. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'll be sharing some of my personal scrapbook pages if you're looking for ideas and inspiration. If you like my style, I'll have those more towards the end of the video. I'm gonna be showing you my workflow, but this is going to look a lot different for you depending on your style of filming. So I'm a photographer. I used to do wedding photography, and I needed something to manage my workflow a lot better. When I first started off, I would just dump all my pictures into Lightroom, which is an editing program, and then I would sort through them that way, and that took forever. Ever. And so I found this program that helps you sort through your hundreds of thousands of pictures if you have a ton and easily color code them so that you can sort through them and just throw away the ones you don't want and it's not nearly as time consuming of a project. And as a side note, if you happen to be a photographer and you know what I'm talking about when I say raw format, I take my pictures in raw format which is like a um, it saves all the data within the photo instead of compressing it into a JPEG, but there's a lot more information. And so if you mess up on a picture, you can go and edit it later and like make it brighter or darker and pull out some details in the highlights or the shadows and not lose quality in your image as quickly. And so I shoot everything in RAW, which takes a lot of data. And so a lot of programs, when you flip from one picture to the next, it takes a bit of time to think as you're going from one to the next. And so this software actually you can flip through as fast as you can click the arrow button and it won't lag between pictures so it's very great for a photographer but even if you're not a photographer and you have so many pictures say on your phone or wherever it helps you go through them and organize them all right before we jump into the photo mechanic which is the first software i would encourage you guys if you have a computer and a laptop i know a lot of people don't and they do everything by their phone, so this is probably kind of irrelevant to you. I don't scrapbook or anything on my phone. Um, so, but this is all computer related. Make sure you organize your files, and I'm still trying to figure out a, a better way at um, <laughs> organizing. But I do have some files here, and I like to um, do all my photos and videos by year. And as you, as you can see here, I have all the way back to 2001. I don't have tons, but when I was back home, and then I, I categorize everything by year, and you can go and click into, I'll just go into the current year, and then I have photos and videos under that category, and then I have the Mennonite Mom, which would be my YouTube channel. Um, so if I go into photos, I do everything by month. So I have a folder for January, and then I just dump all my pictures from January into that, and I'm trying to do like the end of every month. When the next month rolls over, I go through my phone, I put all my phone pictures and videos into a folder, separate folders, videos and pictures of that month, all my cameras, and then I'm trying to get to the point that at the end of that, I'll go through, organize them, edit them, and then scrapbook them and put them into video format monthly so I'm not so overwhelmed by the end of the year. So first off, find an organizing system that works for you in your files and folders. I would definitely encourage you to do by month. And if you want to even be more specific, which I haven't been doing, is maybe every time you put over your uh, photos, actually label your photos by date, which is helpful. I haven't done that and sometimes that has come back to haunt me when I wish I had more data when it wasn't written into the file of when it was taken. On to photo mechanic, how do I organize? This is photo mechanic when you pull it up. Boom, it's super easy, it pulls up a folder and you can go into, let's just go into July, which is this past month. Past month. I'll select that 
and then these are all the pictures and if you have children you know how many pictures you take until you get a picture where it's actually you know both children are looking at you or whatever like in this instance so Lexi was not happy so I have all these pictures of Lexi and Xander obviously I don't want them cluttering up my computer and then further down here I took a whole bunch of Nolan it takes a while till you get the the perfect shot and so what you do is I can just go ahead and click on a photo and it pulls it up and then if you see down here at the bottom you can color code them so all you need to do is you hit your arrow key on your keyboard and it'll just quickly flip through them left or right and then your numbers from one through zero you have different colors that you can color code so number one is red number two is yellow number three is green number four is blue and so on I will just go through I pretty much just use one and two um, maybe like favorite and next favorite but I'll just go through and like this one, so like do I want to keep it or don't I? Xander looks pretty cute there, but Lexi doesn't. So I'll just click through a little bit. I'll be like, hmm, is there any really good pictures here that I like? None of those I really care for. So I'm going to go back and save this one just because it's kind of cute. She's pouting and Xander looks good. Okay, let's keep going. Um, so you can see I'm just flying through these. There's the puppy. I'm like, oh, do I like that? That's pretty cute. Maybe I'll save that one. I'll put a red on number one on that one. Anyway, there's another one where the puppy's actually looking, but the children don't look the greatest. <laughs> anyway, so you can just go through. A lot of these are just not keepers at all. Maybe I'll have one where he's trying to um, soothe her, which I like that one, so I'll put that one red. Anyway, and that's just how I go through all my pictures. When you're finished, you exit out of this screen, and then I'll come up here to up on the left hand corner so I'm flying through this because I'm not this is not extended tutorials I'll hit edit and then I'll scroll down here to where it says select color class and I can go and select whichever color I want here I'm going to select none and then it highlights all the pictures that I did not select and then I can right click and come down here and delete selected photos which I'm not doing because I haven't sorted all them and then it'll just get rid of all those if you want to organize more and you want to select certain colors and move them in other folders, you can do that too. So it's a super, super handy tool to have to get through all your photos, especially we live in a generation where we take so many pictures uh, with our phones and then they just sit there. And I really, really encourage you not to let this happen to you. Take in the extra work, go through, declutter your phone. Um, I need to do that as well, but I try to do it every month and dump it on my computer and then just every now and then just wipe my phone clean but yes declutter your photos just save the ones that are great and then put them on something physical don't just have them on your phone or on your computer it's so so valuable to have your photos printed next this is might not be relevant to you all as a photographer I like to edit all my photos you all a lot of people would just skip this step just don't worry about it at all which I wish I kind of could do that but I've gotten so in love with <laughs> photos so I use Lightroom Lightroom is a paid subscription, which I hate. I used to be able to just buy the program and that's what I had, but I had to upgrade Lightroom because um, only their newer versions would support my newer camera. And so I have to play, pay a monthly subscription to Adobe, which for me, it's worth it. I do enough of work with um, YouTube and this, it's worth the $10 a month or whatever it is. But it is annoying that you can't just buy the program outright. But this is one of the best editing software programs on the, on the planet. I have gotten used to it. It's what I use. It's what I use when I did photography. So yeah, you can just come in here and you can, um, you know, edit your, your photo however you wish, different colors, that type of thing. I'm obviously not going to go over that. But that is my workflow after I have sorted my um, photos. And just look at Xander here. Isn't he just stinking cute? I was like scrapbooking these pictures. I'm like, oh, my little two-year-old, where did he go? <laughs> anyway, so this is where I like to edit my photos. Once they are edited and I export them into JPEG, then comes the scrapbooking part, which is what most of y'all have been wanting. Um, a little bit of background to this before I jump into it. I went through multiple scrapbooking softwares. Um, first, way back when I was younger, it just feels crazy to say, what, 15 years ago or more, 20? I had a film camera, and then I actually scrapbooked back then. I would like physically cut out paper, and I have like the big, thick, sort of like the creative memory style scrapbooks. It took me a while to want to switch over to digital, but I'm so glad I did. Everything is so much neater, easier, whatever. I think I first started off with like creative memories um, software and then they eventually quit making it and it was taken over by like Panstoria. So I got that one, eventually that one ran out. And it just made me frustrated because I don't think they were making enough money on these programs and they would just drop them and then it wouldn't update as time went on with like newer computers. And then I went to Craft Artist, I believe, and that's what I've been using for the past probably five, eight years or so. And I really got used to it, but once again, they weren't updating it. 
and it was running out and it wasn't working quite right with things. And it was pretty painstakingly slow with certain elements. It took me forever to scrapbook. And then I found this in the last year. It's called Artisan 6. And I actually think they bought out Craft Artist because it's very similar. It is kind of pricey. It's like a hundred and did I pay 180? They do run sales. Maybe I paid 120. Personally, um, I believe that it's a little pricey for a scrapbooking program, but it's almost about the only one that's on the market that I feel is viable, at least for what I like. Now, there's more on, I should say, but for the style of scrapbooking that I do, I really like this program. I'm not gonna give you a full tutorial. There's way, way too much to go over, but I'll show you kind of why I like it. All right, first off, when you open it up, um, you come to this welcome page and you can, it'll just kind of step you through how to get started. But once you're in the scrapbooking part of it, um, I like to lay out my book where I, I do 12 by 12 format. I like my big square books. That's kind of what I got started with back when I did creative memories and I just stuck with it. You can get smaller ones, they're less expensive, but I feel you can get more pictures on a big one and they just, they just make it really nice. Um, here's an example of something that I did. So when I first started off scrapbooking, um, one thing I did everything manually, cutting, placing the photos, resizing them, um, and they wouldn't snap together. I hadn't figured out how to do that with my old ones. So I would like painstakingly try to make sure every photo lines up with the other one if I was trying to do like a grid or whatever you call it. And so that took forever. And then I came across this, this program and what I just love about it is you can buy templates for it um, that are relevant, but you have to go through their site. It can get a little pricey, but then the thing is you have it. You have it for everything and you can customize it to however you wish, to your photos needs, everything. And so I have been scrapbooking for years and over the years I have um, uh, bought a lot of like digital kits. You can get a lot of free digital scrapbooking kits online. I'd recommend starting off with that, like different papers, different backgrounds, different stickers. I especially love the stickers, like little word sayings. You can go on Etsy, just there's various different shops. You can download those. Um, let me just show you here. So up here in the right hand corner, if I go up here, there's pages and this is the pages in my scrapbook currently. I also have photos. Let me grab Lexi. All right, and then I have photos. The next tab over is photos. Um, this is where you drag all the photos that you want to scrapbook. And then next to that is content. And this is like where all your scrapbooking things are. So I have them in folders already. And when you go into your computer, I'm not showing you how to do all this, but you'll see here, um, these are my personal art kits. And I kind of categorize them. Like I have beach, tropical, birthday, camping, children, coffee, crafty. I wish I had them a little better organized than this yet because it can be a little bit difficult finding things. So if you do this, make sure you start off with a really good organizing system. But then I can just go in here and click on anything. I kind of have a rough idea where some things are. Um, let's just say I want travel. And then up, it starts pulling up all my travel things. The only thing I hate about this program is it can load things a little bit slowly. But other than that, it's really nice. Um, as you see, it's just kind of taking a bit. But then I have all these different stickers that I either bought or got in free digital kits. Um, I can just say click on this camera roll, drag it over to the page I'm working on, and boom, there it is. I can place it wherever. And then from here, I can just do whatever I want. So if you don't want something, you just come over here. You see on the left-hand side, this is all the elements that you have on that page. I just hit this little eye icon and it disappears. You just have pretty much endless options. And so you have all your stickers, papers, whatever in here. And the cool thing is you're not limited to just whatever you're stuck with. What I mean by that is if, if I have this background paper right here on this page, right now I just use like a brown or whatever. And I'm beginning to, my scrapbooking style has changed a little bit. Before I was like very much like just chalk the page full of stickers and all kinds of like colorful backgrounds. And honestly, it, it looks nice to look at, but it does really distract from the picture. And so I've become a little bit more minimalistic again in my scrapbooking. This one is a little, I like more this style where the pictures are more in focus. You might have a little bit of extra, like this one I feel I have a little more stickers with the uh, camping, fishing, hiking. See, this was something I bought in a kit as well. But I just like to like put my pictures in sort of in a collage form. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Say this background, I didn't like this and I just wanted like a solid plain color. I could come up here to the left and there's all kinds of options up here, but I can make this hit solid color and then I could choose a color from the page. Let's just say, you know, I want to use this blue, which I don't, but if I make it blue, suddenly the background changes to blue. Whoa, sorry Lexi. Changes to blue. You can just pretty much do everything like that. Customize it, 
any which shape and form you want. It's just, there's so, so many options that I love. But the thing that I really, really like is you can buy templates on their website that go with this program. You can also buy kits. Let me just go to a fresh page. So the, this is what I love and it makes it so fast. Um, I can use a template from a kit and I bought various different kits where um, they already have a pre-designed template. Um, you can get anything from like super fancy to just basic. Like let's just pull this one up for instance. Now here is sort of a layout and I can just go over and just start dragging and dropping pictures. I'm just going to drag random pictures in here and boom, there's that picture. Boom, put this one over here. This is not, and then of course I can arrange the picture within the frame. This is not going to look anything whatever, but as you can tell, I can just go and drag into their book. I found different ones um, that are a lot more basic too. Let me just pull up another one. Like I said, this program can be just a little bit slow. I wish they would speed it up. Some of these classic layouts like this, it's just all it is is um, a collage of pictures. There's nothing else. Or um, some of these I really, really like. These are some of my favorites. They have, they have like a little bit of color, a pop of color. You can see I can just pick any of these. Um, this is kind of a summer theme. Then I can just drag these pictures over. Let's just say I don't like the color of this font here. Like this is the life. I could get rid of it completely by going over here and just turning it off. Um, I, or I could change the color if I wanted to match Xander's shirt. I just bring this little dropper over and we could change that. There's just so many options. You can, uh, you can add text down here. Um, if you wanted to be more, you know, add some of your own stickers. Like let's just say I wanted to throw this on, gone fishing. I can resize this down to, Lexi, you and your spit up you know, down here. I'm not doing anything very pretty. I'm just kind of showing you <laughs> how you can make this all work. Anyway, so that kind of gives you an idea. I would highly recommend buying a bunch of templates that you can use over and over and over again. And then often some things that I tend to do is I can just quickly rearrange. Let's say I don't want this picture to take up the full top. You know, I can just move it over here, rearrange it, maybe copy and paste, um, copy, paste, Add another picture in over here. I can just drag and drop and rearrange and suddenly I have another picture up here. And so you can start off with their basic template and then just kind of customize it to however you wish. Um, and so I love this program. It's what I use. You can, you can just do so many things. I'm not gonna dive into it. You can edit your pictures. You can, yeah, there's just a lot of different features. I even use like a program like this to do my thumbnails on YouTube. If you don't wanna spend the money on a program like this, I know Shutterfly has their own like editing. You can upload your pictures and make your own book all within their website. But in all reality, I never quite liked it. It's for one, then I don't, I can't save the pages on my own personal storage. Like I like to save all my scrapbooks on my storage that way I don't lose it and I can print whatever I want and I'm not just stuck to Shutterfly. If you save it on Shutterfly they save it in their projects but you can't download your finished product into your computer so that limits you there. Secondly their program while it is very easy to use you are limited in a lot of the editing you can do it's kind of you're kind of stuck with what they have um, so I don't I like a lot more freedom to edit like I wish but if you're one of the types of people that you don't want more control and you just want to quickly get done, then I'd probably recommend you just go on Shutterfly and use their, their templates and just quickly make a book that way. I know my one friend does it that way. So it's up to you, but this is how I do it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope it helped you out. It was just a very basic tutorial, but there's so much you can do within this program and I love it. I'll have links to all the software that I mentioned below. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a good one. We'll see you guys next time. And it's good you can't smell because <laughs> she's been spitting up and she's got it all over herself. So anyway, we'll see you guys next time.
first night when you danced with me under the stars. Standing on the corner, say let's go to Barcelona. You and me, you and me, you and me. We'll put our differences behind us, escape all this chaos. You and me, you and me, you and me. Three 
months already. Such a big girl. Yes, you are. You're such a big girl. Are you going to talk to mom? <laughs> You're just so happy, aren't you? Are you? You talk to mom. Oh, such a beautiful little girl. Hi. 